Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to have a little bit of the Jacksons from 2300 Jackson Street, and they're going to be singing Pretty Little Senorita Maria. Okay, so that's the Jacksons. And not the wannabe Jacksons, Randy, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike, but the Jacksons with Tito, Jermaine, you know, Randy, that Jackson. Okay. You know, because you can hear the Jacksons in the, in the beat in the background. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take a little time to talk to you guys a little bit more about the mortgage thing. I told all of you back in 2011 when I first started doing these videos, when I started seeing that a lot of people were having problems with their mortgages. I did the video how I paid my mortgage without spending a dime. Well, which is the one that made this man international? Um, and everybody, some people were successful, others weren't, because they didn't understand their capacity. And I keep telling everybody, it's all about capacity. What you don't realize is you're the grantor of the deed of trust. You have the right to bring forth a breach of trust. So let me uh, open this up. And I'm going to put you guys on pause for a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing I want to show you is this right here. I don't do meat. I don't eat meat. I literally stopped eating meat 2016. I did it again in 2012. I think it was from 2011 to 2015. Then I stopped again in 2016, and now it's permanent. No more meat. Ladies and gentlemen, I have not been eating any plant-based anything. I've been doing everything else, pastas, you know flowers, uh, wheat, all of that stuff. However, this right here, do not buy this from this company right here. Okay, sorry. For 25 pounds, $219, please don't, don't let them, nobody jip you like that. Do your research, okay? That's that Amazon stuff. Amazon is always going to charge you more than the company, TarazzyFoods.com. Now, I'm only doing this because I said to myself, I wanted to try the new plant-based foods because I figured it's improved because before it used to taste, <laughs> oh, God, that's nasty. But now, man, I said if the, the technology and everything must have improved. So I went to Amazon and I looked and I saw the prices and I read the comments. And the guy made a comment, well, it's not as good as Tarazi. That, that's what the guy said. And so I said, okay, Tarazi. He says, and, you know, you go to the manufacturer, it's a whole lot cheaper. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go get me some Tarazi. So let's find the Tarazi product, okay? So let's see. We're going to go to shop now. Now. I also called them because I want to tell you how impressed I was. Now, remember that other one was $200? Now, this is a different Tarazi. I don't, this is a, it makes a, a paste, and this is Middle Eastern, and they love that. Okay, however, the one I'm looking for is this one right here with free shipping. Free shipping. Hold on, remember we went to the other site? We just looked, and it was 200 and some dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, I just bought one, and I have it sitting right next to me, and I put it in my other containers because that's 25 pounds. I don't want to have to keep opening that, so I put it in. I have these large Ziploc bags that I use for food, so I put it in the Ziploc. Ladies and gentlemen, on Wednesday, I prepared myself a hamburger. I didn't know that I was supposed to let it sit for an hour. And so, because I was doing the meeting for SATCOM, I let it sit for an hour. Well, an hour and a half while we had our meeting. And 
then I prepared it. Oh, man. I enjoyed it. And you don't hear me talking about food that I enjoy, but I actually had to tell my God, Jehovah, who I thank for my meals. Jehovah, no, that was good. I enjoyed that. Okay. I ate one hamburger, and then I ate half of another, and I couldn't finish it because it was too much. And I didn't make no jumbo hamburgers. You know, I'm not, I don't eat like that. I made a basic regular hamburger like I normally do when I did make hamburgers five years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, six years ago now. Uh, yeah, I keep thinking 2015 is when I ate meat, so that's where the five is coming from. But it, it is going on seven years since I last had a real hamburger. Okay? A regular hamburger, should I would say, made out of actual beef. Ladies and gentlemen... I ate this burger. Not only did it smell like the burgers I used to make for myself, and when I say smell like the burgers I used to make for myself, I added all kinds of seasonings to my burgers. And for those of you who don't like all the oils and greases and the saturated fats in your burger, I didn't fry my burgers in grease. I boiled them. Yeah, I made the patties, put them in a skillet, added a quarter rim of water to the skillet, let it boil. Got all the fats out of it, and I dumped the fat. Then I added water a second time, let it boil, and then let it drain to the point to where the water evaporated. And now I'm using the oils from the burger itself to fry it at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, you talk about a burger that is moist and what they refer to as juicy. That's how I kept my burgers juicy and people kept coming back for more. Okay, that was my way of doing it. Because it wasn't watery. There's no way in the world that burger is watery because you let all the water drain out and then you use the, the remaining oils in the burger to cook it. And I do the colossal burger. So I like doing the chili and adding the egg and the cheese, the fried egg. I like doing it. I think the burger will tell me, an egg to a hamburger? Ladies and gentlemen, you mix eggs with your breakfast all the time. You mix eggs with bacon all the time. So what is wrong with an egg with a hamburger? Shh. Don't tell nobody. Uh, hold on. Oh, this is Jodeci. They talking about falling. I was like, who's this in the background? A -a -a Ain't talking about nothing. Lord have mercy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tarazi. This is the one I have. You don't have to get this one. But this one, I like because they're getting ready to ration food again. So I got 75 pounds. I got three tubs of this. That's $200. Okay, the other one, pay attention, the one that we just looked at, it was one 25-pound container, which they get from this company, and they're charging you $219, whereas I got three of them for the price of their one. Now, I did that purposely. Why did I do this? Because this one tub right here will last me five or six months. I promise you, I can't go through all of this. This is too much. Because when I ate those two hamburgers, I didn't eat again until the next day after 4 p.m. Almost 24 hours later. I wasn't hungry. Okay? I literally couldn't eat the two hamburgers. I had to cut it in half. And I saved the second hamburger for later that night. And all I did was put it back on the skillet, let the bottom of the bread fry, then turned it over. And then after I turned it over, I turned the fire off and I put the plate. I have a large uh, plastic coated plate. I let that keep the heat in. And it tastes as if I just made the burger at that moment. So I let it warm it up, and then I went to town on it. Hey, satisfied. Look, y'all don't see me advertising food, and I don't talk about things unless, because I don't work for Tarazi. I, I may not even be spelling the name correctly, but I believe I am. Uh, falafel? You know, I've heard of falafel uh, before. I didn't, even know, I didn't even know how to pronounce the name because I didn't pay attention to it until now. But I've heard of falafel, but I never tried it. Ladies and gentlemen, the seasoning in this, the smell of it, 
when you cook it, it actually smells like you are cooking a hamburger. And so when I ate it, I had to make myself realize that I'm not eating uh, what they refer to as an organic burger. I'm not eating a plant-based burger. I'm actually eating a hamburger. And that's what I allow myself to understand because it tastes like a hamburger. I have my pickles, my ketchup, my mustard. I don't usually add mustard to hamburgers. That's usually what a sandwich, but I added mustard and I promise you, enjoyed it. My mouth is watering now I'm just talking about it because I haven't eaten today and it's going on two o'clock. Okay, I didn't eat it yesterday. I had it two days in a row. I didn't eat it yesterday uh, because I had shrimp. Okay, but what's getting ready, what's getting ready to happen, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm about to be making myself burritos and spaghetti. It's like I told you, people coming to my house, they always talked about enjoying the food, especially things like I just mentioned, hamburgers, burritos, spaghetti. Um, and so I love my food. When I do it, I enjoy eating my food. Okay? All right. That's what I wanted to tell you guys about. All right. That's the end of the video. All right. Y'all have a good day. Bye-bye. Adios. Apologize. That's not the end of the video. Hold on a second, and I'll tell you guys what we're here to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, I got Michael Jackson in the background. He's talking about some blood on somebody's dance floor. Look, if they're blood on the dance floor, you ain't got no business out there. Okay, that means something is wrong. Something is gravely wrong. Um, you know, Susie's got your number and all of that stuff. He, he got problems, y'all. But there, there, there's just blood on the dance floor, and somebody better clean that up. And there's a spill on aisle six. Spill on aisle six. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you all have got to understand who you be. This is a typical Truth and Lending Act disclosure. So pause the video. No, don't, don't look at the rest of it. Pause the video, and I know you're not going to want to do it, but you're not going to fully understand this because this has been in all of your mortgages all this time, and you ain't, shut up. You ain't been saying it. So go get your mortgage so you can see the same thing at the same time. Okay, don't worry about it. We'll wait for you. Pause the video. We'll wait for you. Okay, now that they're gone, let's go ahead and talk. No, no, let them go look for that. We can talk about something more important. Just kidding. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, we have to get you to understand your position because many of you, You've never played the game pole position. Many of you are too young to know the game pole position. In America, everybody wants to be number one. Everybody wants to be in competition. Ladies and gentlemen, you're being in competition only with yourself. In 2011, I told all of you, I said the system is a system of credits. It has nothing to do with money. There is no money. So the bank gave you, and they told you the truth, Federal Truth in Lending Act, okay? Real estate loans, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a real estate loan. You did not buy real estate. You were getting a personal loan. They lied. But remember, this is done after you acquire the property and you use it as collateral. Okay, it's called after collateral acquired property or after acquired collateral. Ladies and gentlemen, the cost of your credit as a yearly rate. The cost of whose credit? The cost of your credit as a yearly rate. Wait, 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 hold on. Whose credit? The cost of your credit as a yearly rate. Ladies and gentlemen, not the credit that's lent to you. Not the, the cost of the credit. No, the cost of your credit. So when you hear people talking about you're using your own credit and they're using your signature, we'll talk about that in a second, but it is true. Now pay attention. This is a document that they're sending to you. They give it to you. They do it as part of the Federal Truth and Lending Act. Finance charge. You see this is the 2011, I mean 2011. <laughs> A December 11, 2006 document. 
pay attention. The dollar amount the credit will cost you. Wait a minute, you're paying for your own credit? Hold on now. The dollar amount the credit will cost you over the period of the loan. $283,000. Wait a minute. Okay, amount finance. The amount of credit provided to you or on your behalf. Look at that. They're providing this credit on your behalf from your own account. Hold on now. It's credit, ladies and gentlemen. It's not money. But they used the dollar sign. Actually, they didn't use the dollar sign. There's just a dollar sign on a document. Oh, oh, you guys didn't know that credit is constituted as U.S. currency? Hold on. Let, let me see if I can show that to you. I just put credit as construed as U.S. currency because I just want to get to the nitty gritty. So let's see. Credit or token are an internal credit, uh, internal currency. In a cash-based system, the cost of the gain is represented in U.S. dollars. In a cash-based system, the cost of the gain is represented as U.S. dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, but the credits or tokens are an internal currency. When you go to a game store and you put tokens in the machine, interesting, huh? It is currency. It is understood and agreed that final credit on currency is subject to bank count. Interesting, isn't it? Normally, a check is a credit transaction. Whoa. A check is a credit transaction? Of course it is. Because a check is just extending of credit. Intended to become temporaneous as if the check was presented for payment in the normal course of an affair. The check is a credit, people. Let's get past the check credit thing. Yeah, that's another one. That's a third one. Nobody, we didn't even put nothing in here about no check, did we? See, we didn't put, we said, uh, yeah, we put, all of these are about checks. Hold on, let's stop for a second. It is true that the certificate evidenced a debtor-creditor relationship between the bank and the certificate holder, but that is the relationship between a bank and a depositor, and yet money in the bank is regarded as cash throughout the business world, and bank checks duly honored are treated as cash, even though they are only passing of credits to the payee. They're treated as cash. We, we don't want no treatment. Mm -mm, I don't want no treatment. Mm -mm, I, I want a cure. It's a credit-based system, ladies and gentlemen. That's all that's been going on. Moreover, under the UCC, a post-dated check is typically not a check, but instead a credit instrument. Okay? It's just credit, people. The whole system. All right, let's do this right here. The rationale of the rule is that a cashier's check circulates in the commercial world as a primary obligation of the issuing bank and is generally regarded as substantial as the substantial equivalent to cash. Doesn't matter how much regarded. It's what does the law say? Unlike traveler's check, however, a credit card is also a device for borrowing money. See, credit is deemed money in the United States. Interesting, ain't it? A credit card, nope, don't want credit card. When issued, it is a credit and when returned, a debit in the cashier's account, a cashier's check, ladies and gentlemen. It's a credit. 
all you're doing is transferring credits. Hold on now. A credit instrument is identical to a personal check. A credit instrument is identical to a personal check. Okay, I would read this case so you guys can understand. The hour style money order is an instrument of credit. Whether drawing or passing credit instruments, knowing there is insufficient funds in an account upon which he may draw, uh, in which it may be drawn, or with the intent to defraud, in a crime in the state, is a crime in the state of Nevada. Ladies and gentlemen, this is somebody issuing a letter of credit. This is somebody doing an hour style type money order. Okay, instrument the debt and the payee shall be brought only in court, state or federal in Nevada. I hereby submit to the jurisdiction of any state, federal, or Nevada, in addition to any amounts authorized by law, and I agree to pay the cost for collections, including attorney's fees. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something that somebody's attorney walked, worked out for them. Why in the world, if they had a right, why would you submit to the jurisdictions of the court, state or federal, in the entire state, and pay any and all amounts authorized by law? The only reason it's authorized by law is because you're agreeing to pay. See, this is somebody who was threatened and listened to the attorney because they didn't know what they were doing. Whether drawing or passing a credit instrument, knowing that there are insufficient funds in an account upon which it may be drawn, and with the intent to defraud, is a crime in the state of Nevada, which will result in criminal prosecution. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be criminally prosecuted in any state for passing a letter of credit. Why? Because it's coming from your account. You are the creditor. Okay. Notice this. Oh, the person put $100. Okay. See, ladies and gentlemen, we put $100 in credits. I authorize the payee to complete any of the following items on this negotiable instrument. Any missing amounts and date, the name, account number. Oh, this is not somebody doing the hour stop money. This is somebody doing one of those other uh, pieces of junk. Okay. Uh... As the Nevada Supreme Court noted in U.S. Home Corporation versus Michael Valestros Trust, a clause that is in the same size font and other provisions is not fatally inconspicuous, has thus failed to make the case that the clause violates a strong public policy in Nevada. Uh, because the form selected clause is enforceable, I need not and do not reach that arguments should be dismissed, uh, that I should dismiss this case under the doctrine of the form non, oh God, whatever. Let's go past something else because that, it is ordered that dismiss is denied. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole point, ladies and gentlemen. This is an individual, that case still could be going on because it's in the federal courts. Uh, this is somebody issuing one of those other documents going off of somebody else's video or so-called understanding of law, adding all of that junk in there. Ladies and gentlemen, uh-uh. They are trying to use technicalities in dealing with the hour style money order. So you are now going to have to get their attention. Okay you're going to have to let them know what gives you the right to use the money orders. You're going to have to do the research. It's not my job to do that research for you. As I said, all they do in this country is credits. Credits is not funds in an account. The bank cannot sit up there and tell you where they're getting the credit from. Go ahead. Who gave the bank the credit? Where did the bank get the credit from? What law that they get the credit from? These are the questions you all should be asking. When did they notify me that these credits would not be equivalent to what I was repaying? See, they're asking you to pay back in a particular sum. All right, hey, hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Atlantic Star. 
you see, Atlantic Star, we're going to put you all on hold for just for a second. We'll be right back to you guys in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, 25 minutes into the video, now you should be listening and paying attention. I want to show you something so that you guys will understand your position. If you choose to use an hour style money order, that's your choice. Why? Because your agreement wants you to pay attention to your agreement. This is what you agree to do. You are the grantor of this agreement. Pay attention so that you understand what you agreed. You, the borrower, in return for a loan of credit that I have received. This is signed after you received it. You did not receive a real estate loan. You received a personal loan. There is no property. You don't own anything yet. I promise to pay U.S., then it says $175,000, the amount called the principal, plus interest, to the order of the lender. You are not saying that you're going to pay $175,000 in dollar bills. You're saying you're going to pay it in U.S. currency. Credits are currency in the United States. Shh, don't tell nobody. Credits are currency in the United States. So you're not breaching that agreement. The lender is Bank of America, N.A. Okay. I will make all payments under this note in the form of money order. Doesn't say what type of money order. It just says money order. So shall we take a trip? Watch what we're going to do right here. We're not going to look to the courts to try to wiggle their way out because that's what they've been doing as of late is wiggling their way out of legal definition of legal definition of a money order. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the problem. Congress has added money orders to some of the statutes. An order issued by a post office, a bank, a telegraph office for payment of a specific sum of money, usually to a branch of the issuing organization. So that's all it is, an order. Pay to the order of. A money order is a negotiable instrument requiring the issuer to pay a certain sum of money on demand at a specific uh, to a specific person or organization. A money order means any check. Now, see, that's the problem. A money order is not a check. It never was a check. It has never been defined in law as check. And what you want to go to is not the Uniform Commercial Code. You don't want to go to any of these codes. Where's the one that says a money order is a check? This is uh, the Law Insider. Okay, this is the Law Insider's a dot com website. The Law Insider is not an official website of anything. They call themselves the Law Insider. Okay, money order means a payment order for a specific amount of money. The terms include express money order and personal money order. Look at that, a personal money order. Any instrument for the transmission or payment of, on which the remitter is the purchaser. Okay, so where did they get that check from? Hold on. Examples of money orders in a sentence. Money order or certified check for $100 payable to blah, blah, blah. But a money order doesn't mean a check. Here, where are we getting this definition from? Money order means any check, draft, or money order or other payment instrument. Money order does not include a traveler's check or an electronic payment instrument. So where are they getting this definition from? Where is that, that law written by Congress for which they have the authority to initiate? Money order means is money order issued, the term of this act by any or any postal authority for an operator payment. Definition is coming from, looks like it's Washington State. 
I don't think it's Washington State, but I am interested to find out. Um, joint resolutions originally codified in Title 10 and 1010, blah, 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 codified Title 36, Code of Laws, South Carolina. Okay, here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen, and it is a problem. And what year was this law enacted? Uh, 2012, especially when they saw a rash of money orders. But this says that it was done. Yeah, that's the only problem. The original one was done back then. But we got to go back to this definition of a money order. Ladies and gentlemen, what you must understand is under the Bill of Exchange Act, uh, watch this. Uh, let's let's do it this way. I, I'll feel more comfortable doing it this way. Watch what I do. Let's do that. Let's do money order. We're going to do that first. Now, what we're going to do is the BOE next, okay? Money orders are not considered to be currency under the statute and its regulations, CFR. Money orders are not construed to be currency under the statute and regulation. Of course it is. Money order is said to be a check. Oh, no. This is a criminal case where the United States went after somebody for using a money order because the person didn't know what they were talking about. Now, notice what they did. The court agrees with the government that Hardy's reading uh, indictment is inappropriately selective. The indictment should be read as a whole, read to include facts which are necessarily implied and construed according to the common meaning. Here the indictment alleged that Hardy concealed the true source of funds and identity of the assets by knowingly structuring the purchase of money order from domestic financial institutions and by knowingly depositing cash and money orders in an account held by federally insured banks. So the person purchased money orders from domestic institutions and then deposited into the bank. Read as a whole, the indictment alleges that the prohibited financial structuring involved not just money orders, but also cash and cashier's checks. Okay, so the reference money orders and their monetary amounts to argue that the indictment fails to sufficiently allege an offense of conspiracy, for example, because the maximum amount of money to be purchased for a money order was $1,000, the fact that the uh, the AS, I guess this is an attorney, delivered each money order in the amount of $3,000 does not constitute illegal structuring because of selective focus on monetary limits of each money order Again, ignores the indictment as a whole. Okay, I see the argument, and the argument works because the person attacked the indictment and not the actual code, and the judge focused on the indictment, and I believe they did attach attack the code. Ladies and gentlemen, CFR, that's a regulation. That's not a law. CFR only applies to individuals who are subjected to CFR. Okay, money orders are currency in the United States. They are issued by banks. They're issued by financial institutions. And remember, it's an agreement to pay a certain amount. United States currency is normally considered to be a bearer instrument, the holder of the instrument. Uh, cash, of course, is coin or currency of the United States, thus is a monetary instrument. But I'm talking about money orders. See. It's not giving me traveler's check. Wait, hold on. Money as defined is defined as currency, coins, banknotes, and bullion. Traveler's check, regular check, registered checks, and money orders held for sale to the public. See, it says money orders held for sale to the public. Who came up with that? This is 1986. So let's, I'm interested for that comment right there because that's interesting. So who came up with that for money orders for sale to the public? Like I said, Congress can't regulate money orders. 
because Congress has no authority. They didn't create money orders. The United States Postal Service is not part of the U.S. government. The United States Postal Service only has a contract with government. The policy provides coverage for loss of money, securities, and other property. Money is defined as, where are you getting this definition from? Pay attention. Money is defined as currency, coin, banknotes, bullions, traveler's checks, registered checks, and money orders held for public sale. Securities also are also defined, but there is no definition for other property. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, please understand that when SACOM creates securities, they are considered currency in the United States. I didn't say this. You just heard this judge mention this. What respects valuation of losses, Section 9 of the Uniform Commercial Code of the policy states, oh, well, no, sorry, not of the Uniform Commercial Code. Somebody has a policy. Which policy is this? Hold on, got to find the policy. I guess Levi Strauss. Athena! I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. This is an insurance policy. This is an insurance policy. Now, just like they're being technical about this insurance policy, the same way that they're being technical by this insurance policy, it's the same way you get to be technical by your contract. More than an actual cash value thereof, at the close of business on the business next day, preceding the day in which the loaf was discovered. And then they say, nor as respects other property, because they don't define what other property is, for more than the actual cash value thereof at the time of loss. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that this one includes a money order as Pay attention. A money order as cash or currency of the United States. I didn't say it. And money orders held for sale to the public. Money orders are currency of the United States. Well, that doesn't actually say that. That says money orders that are held for sale. That's correct. Why? Because they cannot come out and tell you that because the money orders are accepted, and because they have been accepted, um, the so-called westbound order was no different than a money order or cash itself. I didn't write this, people. The so-called westbound order was no different than a money order or cash itself. I didn't write it. I can only tell you what I know. Uh, and this was 1955, ladies and gentlemen. A bank money order is essentially the same as a cashier's check. Okay? I, I didn't write it, people. A bank money order is essentially the same as a cashier's check. Uh, it is a bill of exchange. Remember I told you we were going to do BOEs? Drawn by a bank upon itself. Drawn by a bank upon itself and accepted in advance. Of the act of issuance, ladies and gentlemen, if the bank can draw credit upon itself through a bill of exchange, you have the exact same right to do the exact same. No, I said copy. Lord have mercy. Okay, hold on. Copy. All right. Watch this. Look, I can't help it if you guys haven't done your research. I can't help it if some of you are going to jail because you did the hour style money order without doing your research, without knowing what to say. And no, you don't get to call me to help you get out of your situation. United States currency is normally considered to be that of the bearer of the instrument. No, don't want that. We want the bill of exchange. So if this one doesn't say anything about bill of exchange, okay. In other words, it is a bill of exchange drawn by a bank upon itself and accepted in advance of the acts of issuance. That's the money order, draft or all of that stupid stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, a bill of credit then issued by a state is negotiable paper designed to pass as currency. And it circulates as money. Okay, again, 
A check is, in every legal, legal sense, a bill of exchange. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bill of Exchange Act is a Britain Act. It was adopted by the United States when they were doing their money. It has not been repealed. It has not been replaced. We're still under the Bill of Exchange Act. Okay? All you got to do is do your research. It is a bill of exchange draw up on a bank itself and is accepted as an act of issuance by the act of issuance. So we were talking about not a cashier's check, but a money order. Now, a money order is not in the same category as a cashier's check. Why? Because a money order does not have to be backed by funds in an account. There is no requirement for a money order to be backed by funds in an account. Okay? All right. And I'm not going to do videos telling you guys how to use the hour style money orders. That's not my job. I told you I wasn't going to get involved in that. That's not what I do. That's not my main focus, and you guys are not going to make that me. Okay? I did a couple of videos, well, a couple, a couple hundred videos on the subject, and people, the videos are out there. You just got to find them. Google has taken a lot of the videos down. Okay? We have seen that a check is a bill of exchange. The rights and obligations of a drawer of a bill of exchange are the same as those of the first endorser of any other negotiable instrument. Now, they come up with these codes, but the code does not get rid of the original law. It is frequently linked to a bill of exchange. Accept it in advance. We are a system of credits. There is no money. Cash, legal tender in the form of Federal Reserve notes is not cash. You all know that. We've shown you the website where Federal Reserve notes are not of any value. They are not redeemable. That has been the case since 1933. Okay? And they are not money as defined in the constitution nor has congress made federal reserve notes money what they did do was make federal reserve notes emergency script during the emergency such a check is dominated by the courts as being what in reason it is a bill of change drawn by a bank upon itself and accepted in advance by the act of its issuance. Ladies and gentlemen, if you write a hour style money order, you have the right to draw it upon yourself, to draw it upon the credit you have with the United States government. That's why we do hours in the form of credits. Why? Because must have an interest in the C O L A T E R A L to P L E D G E. So must have an interest in the collateral to pledge the collateral. UCC expressly requires that a debtor must have rights to the collateral in order for a security interest to attach. Ladies and gentlemen, you can pledge your interest in the collateral. What is that collateral? Watch this. And you're going to have to watch the videos that we did on the trust fund earlier showing that all government is a trust and any monies received by government goes into the public trust fund. A trust relationship exists between the public officials with the power to expand public funds and each taxpayer is an owner of the public funds. 
please, 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 I am not a genius with stuff like this. I just know what I'm talking about, okay? You have an interest in this collateral. Yes, you can use the hour style money orders if you have this understanding. I know, I know, I know. A lot of you are now, your mind is going and you're just, oh God, what did he just say? Go back and listen to the entire video. Don't start just at the 20 minutes. Listen to the entire video so that you keep everything in context. Okay? In general, however, a taxpayer must have a beneficial interest in any property subject to the lien. You have a lien on the public funds of the United States and you don't even realize it. So those of you who are doing UCCs against the government and all that, you're not doing them correctly. Second, in order to create a trust, a person creating a trust must have some present or future right to or interest in the funds directed to be set apart. Okay, that's how we're creating our trust. The individual must show that they have a special or definite interest in the trust or entitled to receive a benefit. That's what we've been talking about. This is the year of the trust, everybody. And once you guys start understanding that trust exists and you are beneficiary, the necessary indefiniteness of charitable trust beneficiary will leave few situations in which the court will hold that individuals have, blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, they know that it's all about trust. They know that it's all about trust. In Duffy, we stated that standing required a beneficial interest and that a beneficial interest is one of value, worth, advantage, or use to a person. So go ahead and start claiming your beneficial interest, but do so within reason. Don't be stupid. Some of you are ex claiming all this exorbitant amount. Claim only the amount respecting the public debt and learn how to write off that debt. Document the debt. Document the debt. Document the debt. People, document the debt. Do it correctly. Get an accounting software, ladies and gentlemen, and start doing the accrual method. Do not go by these idiots telling you that the accrual method is so complicated. Look, this is, and this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. Hold on. Let's get rid of you. Let's get rid of you. And we're going to stay here. A-C-C-U-R-A-L. Oh, R-U-A-L. Sorry. Yeah. You see, I said accrual method, do it yourself. D-Y-I. I ain't never did it that way, y'all. I ain't never did it that way. I, I saw this video, but this is what I want y'all to do. I want y'all to study on how to do the accrual method and start doing your own accrual method. I'm sorry, I want you, see, loophole levy. Loophole. I want you to do yourselves a favor, ladies and gentlemen. Stop thinking that you can't do this. Stop thinking that you don't know how. Start to use your minds. Do your research until you understand. They say the disadvantages, well, you get to write off all of that debt using this method. So forget those other disadvantages. You follow me? You feel me? I feel for you. I think I love me. You know what I'm saying? All right, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you've learned something in this video as well. You know what we're finding out? We're finding out that people are actually starting to take these videos seriously. You know, this song right here, put my money where my mouth is. Ladies and gentlemen, I just like the way this song is done. And I give this young man a lot of credit for coming up with this, okay? Let it be, y'all. Just let it be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have liver
take us on out of here. I want to say, I do know that for some of you, I have filled in a lot of potholes over the last couple of months. I want all of you to pay attention to these words. Go back to April of this past year, even the end of March, when I asked people for their assistance, I said, if you gave me your assistance, then I will have the time to give you the information you need. I just told you earlier in the video, well, I think it was this video, about all the stuff that I've been doing since YouTube has blocked the videos and how much time I've had. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been putting you all first, just as I promised you I would do. No, I'm not asking for no money. I don't need your money. I have a God, and he's pretty rich, and he does take care of me. So he's going to take care of that. He allowed you to help me the last time. I ain't allowing you to help me this time, those of you who want to use my words against me. He is going to take care of everything. So let him work things out. It's not the way you think, okay? I don't follow your thinking. Your thinking doesn't mean anything in this context, okay? But I kept my word to you. I told you that if you did that, that I would be able to provide you the information to help you. And I know if three of you are helped by this information that I've been putting out over the last couple of months, do you guys realize that's over 300 videos in the last seven months since this person has been back amongst the living? Go back and look. Look at how many videos are being produced by this person. Just this week alone, without even being having the ability to put videos up on YouTube, you guys have had five videos done. There might be another one done by tomorrow. All right? I have some more work around here to do, and I have to go. It's after 2 o'clock, so I have to go fix my hamburgers because I am having hamburgers. And I've added enough, a little bit of sweet and sour um, mix to it. Well, this one is a sweet chili sauce. So I've added a sweet chili sauce to the mix, and I'm about to fry those up, and I'm about to enjoy it. Hey, thanks, Liberty. He's saying let it be, y'all. So I got to let it be, y'all. We're going to see y'all later. Let it be. Got to go.